Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be talking about 12.7. Uh, day one, we're going to be talking about graphing our sine and cosine functions. So it kind of hinted at a lot of these things, but the idea is that the function, if I look at y equals sine of x or y equals cosine of x, they have a graph that goes along with it. Now it's a very different kind of graph, and that's what we're going to talk about right here. Okay. Um, when we do our graphing, we're going to talk about how to do it by hand using a kind of a five-point method. So a few things we need to clarify up here. So this is the graph right here of a sine function. And that's like that right there. Now, this, this is called a periodic function because it's going to continue on forever. It's going to do this whole repeating pattern, and it's going up and down, up and down, like these waves. Okay? So the period is a part of that periodic table, or a period yeah. Periodic function. The period is the length in which the curve travels before repeating. Okay. A normal period for sine and cosine is either 360 or 2 pi, depending on what how you want to define it, if you're dividing in degrees or radians. Amplitude is the distance above or below the center, center line of the graph. Notice how I say distance above and below. So we talk about the amplitude, we're talking about just like a positive distance. So we're looking at these two ideas right here. Okay, here's our normal sine function right here. It starts at 0, 0. It goes up to 90, crosses here at 180, down to 270, and then this right here. This is actually one period. Okay, it's one complete pattern, and then it's going to start repeating again. So it goes back up and down, and then so on. Okay, so again, these five points kind of make up that one full pattern. Same thing happens with our cosine. We start here at 0, 1. We cross at 90, go down and one down to the bottom at 180, cross at 270, and then up here at 360. Again, five points to make up one complete period. This is the normal ones. Don't forget, this is also in terms of radians. So 90 is the same as pi over 2, 180 is pi, 270 is 3 pi over 2, and then 360 is 2 pi. So if we look at that in those terms, we can actually label our graphs in terms of radians or degrees, depending on how what we're trying to end that specific question. Okay. Now, here's how some things will change though. Okay. So y equals sine of three times theta. What we're changing with this is actually going to be the period. Okay. So I should write it this way here. Okay, for now, we're going to stick with just these two. We're changing the A and B values and seeing what happens. A change, uh, changes the amplitude, okay? And because of the distance, we're just going to focus on, like, if it's a negative value, it's just a positive intermit, no matter what, because that's the distance it goes. Period follows this idea, okay? If we take 2 pi divided by the B value, that tells us how the length of our period, okay? So when we look at this example here, well, I should go back. So in this case, the amplitude here is one. So the absolute value of the amplitude is just one here. Okay. So it's just our standard graph like these right here, where it goes up to one, down to one. That's what we're saying with that one. Our period though is going to change. We're going to take two pi divided by three. So that is the length of one full period. It's two pi over three. Okay. Um, now, if I want to turn that into degrees, feel free to change that into degrees by doing your normal conversion. So you can take 2 pi over 3. That's in radians, so I multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Okay, so if I do that, that will cancel out. Divide by 3 is 1. Divide by 3 is 60. So 2 times 60 is 120 degrees. So this is the length of the period. So again, what we're saying with that is it repeats its pattern after 120 degrees or 2 pi radians. To get my horizontal scale, this is that five points idea. We want to actually, we see how the, the pattern of this goes. First sign, it goes up, down, down, up like that. We want to find these five points that are in relation to the different period. So now a normal period is 2 pi or 360. Our new one is shrunken down. We're actually going to see this go kind of something like this, where it gets more curves within one normal period. Okay, so in order to do that, I could take for my tick marks, I'm going to take my period, 2 pi over 3, divide that by 4, which is the same as taking 2 pi over 3 times 1 over 4. So I divide by 2 is 1, divide by 2 is 2, 
So my period, uh, sorry, my uh, horizontal scale is going to be made up by pi over six. You'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. The other option, if I do degrees, I'm going to do 120 divided by four and I get 30. This makes sense because these are the same, pi over six and 30. Now I want to plot all the information on a coordinate plane. We're just going to go with a very kind of a, you know, I can draw nice straight lines, but it's a rough sketch of my graph is the idea. And again, I'm going to do both of them so you can see both radians and degrees is the idea. So in terms of radians, here's how it works. We're going to start at 0, 0. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, same thing here. 1, 2, 3, 4. The whole purpose of doing our tick marks idea is that every pi over 6 is each tick mark. So this will be pi over 6. This will be 2 pi over 6, which if I reduce it, is pi over 3. And then it's going to be 3 pi over 6, which is the same as pi over 2. And another pi over 6 is going to be 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. Again, notice how I said the length of the period is 2 pi over 3. Here I'm ending at 2 pi over 3. So next thing I want to do is I'll put my amplitude on there. I got 1 and negative 1. Since sine starts at 0, 0, this is going to be the highest point here. The next point crosses at pi over 3. The lowest point goes to pi over 2. And then we're crossing again at 2 pi over 3. So this is my sketch of my graph right there is my sine function. Okay. Um, for comparison, you can graph both of these. I would suggest Desmos. You can see how it compares between the two. For our purposes, we're just doing how to graph these. If I do my degrees, then every tick mark is worth 30. So I got 30, 60, 90, and 120. And the same process as before. So here's my one and negative one for the amplitude. So I got one, zero, the crossing is zero, go down to negative one, and then back up to there for 120, okay? That's my one complete period. So again, this is what is the sine of three theta, okay? That's our process every time. So we're going to go through this one. We do three times the cosine of two theta. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit quicker this time. It's cosine, so it starts a little bit differently here. And I'm just going to stick with radians in this case. Okay, the amplitude in this case is equal to three because that's that value of three there. The period is two pi divided by B. So in this case, it is two pi divided by two because that's the B value of two. So A is three for amplitude and then B is uh, uh, two there. So when I finish that out, that's two pi over two is pi. My horizontal scale, I'm gonna take my period length, which is pi divided by four. So if I, so uh, that's just done there. So again, what that means is pi over four is gonna be each tick mark in the uh, period. So we'll go ahead and do this right here. So I've got, well, I don't wanna mark zero, zero. So let me change that. I'm actually starting here at, well, this is my amplitude is going to go up to three. Then it's going to go down to negative three. So I'm starting here at zero, three, because it's the cosine, okay? Since my normal cosine starts at zero, one, with the amplitude of three, it's going to start up at zero, three right here. I'm still going to mark four tick marks. Pi over four is each mark. So I got pi over four, and then two pi over four, which is pi over two. 3 pi over 4, and then 4 pi over 4, which is pi. And again, that was the length of my period right there. So I start up here at 0, 3. I'm crossing it right here at uh, pi over 4. Here's my lowest point, crossing again. And then here's I am up at my highest point. So once again, that's cosine there. You know, it's a little bit different from sine. If it was sine, it would do something like this. Whoa, I don't want that. That's weird. Let me get those points back here and here. Okay. Right there. Okay. So when I do sine, it would have looked like this. It would have gone from here, would have gone up. It would have crossed, it comes down, and then it would finish here. So that's how the sine function would have looked like in comparison. So everything would have been the same, except this would be sine instead of cosine. Okay. And then here we got a word problem we can work with. Humans can hear sounds with a frequency of 40 hertz. Find the period of the function that models the sound waves. So since we talk about frequency, 
where we're saying is 40 hertz, there's 40 cycles per second. So what that means is for the period, that's going to be uh, represented as time over cycle. The period is the time it takes for one cycle to complete. Okay, that's what we looked at in terms of this. This is, if, if it was time in seconds, it would be pi time. And then three, uh, three would be the heights of everything. So in this case, we can say one second is in 40 cycles. But if I kind of change that around, I can divide those both out by 40. It's the same as saying 0 0.025 seconds. Again, what this is saying is that is per cycle. Okay, so a, a full cycle completes in 0 0.025 seconds. That means our period is one over 40 or 0 0.025. Since that's our period value, we're going to use that with this idea. Instead of period equals 2 pi over b, I'm going to actually change this a little bit. You can substitute and solve for that b value. Personally, I like to do it first. I do 2 pi over b. It multiplies both sides by b. So I got bp equals 2 pi. And then divide by period. So that b equals 2 pi over period. Okay. So that's what we have here. In this case, I can just take my 2 pi divided by my period, which in this case is 0 0.0. Uh, 0, 0.025. Okay. When I do that, and I simplify it. I get B is equal to 80 pi. So two divided by 0 0.025 gives me 80. And then I leave it as 80 pi. That's the B value. Okay. So that is going into my formula now. That's the whole idea here. We don't, we're going to leave it as an amplitude of one. We don't have any other information to change that, but the B value is going to be replaced with 80 pi. Okay. So we have Y is equal to sine of 80 pi times T, okay? So again, that is telling us the kind of, it's the modeling the sound wave is what it is, okay? And that is it for our, yep, that is it for our initial sine and cosine functions. We're gonna be doing more with this and we're gonna change things around a bit more, but for now we're focusing on just the amplitude and the period, okay? So the idea is that period is how many times does it complete a full cycle within a given time? Amplitude is how, far up and how far down the graph is going to go. Okay, uh, that's it for day one. Take care, everybody. See you next time.